Let's get into the pay per view. This is AW Wrestle Dream. Yet another pay per view on the schedule. Another fifty bucks down. Another fifty bucks to AW. Wonderful. Um, See over oh. here, it's half that price, and it's still too much. It's like I can't keep paying this. <laughs> it's too much. They really have to get on Max in this damn country. They really have yeah, to. wait till they go to Max. <sighs> then, exactly. So, by the way, it's not, how does that affect you at all? Does it affect you whatsoever if they end up on Max here? Does it affect um, you all? I don't. I don't imagine so because we don't have Max still. Yeah, no, don't have Max you, yeah. You um, guys don't have Max yet. No, no, no. no. I don't. I, I think because HBO have a sort of licensing thing with Sky TV. That's like the satellite TV people. Um, so all the HBO stuff goes on Sky. Last so thing. Yeah, but but Sky don't really have like a streaming thing unless you subscribe to their satellite service. So it's. Most of the HBO stuff ends up elsewhere, or you just, I mean, I'm just going to have to say it, or you pirate it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, so I imagine AEW would just stay with Fight, and you just pay through Fight, probably. Fair enough. Fair right, enough. Yeah. So, by the way, another thing I did on the run sheet here was I decided, because we always make fun of AEW and other titles. And as we go through, I actually wrote everybody's titles on here as we go through. So, another thing I did on the run sheet. <laughs> you can tell I had a lot of stuff on this run sheet. Yeah, yeah. Um, Start from the bottom to the top, and it is really bad when I every second hit in a row we're opening up with MJF, which is weird. But it is the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championship match at the moment. Okay, by the way, I forgot to mention we were doing this on Wednesday afternoon before the final Dynamite Go Home show, and obviously Collision also now they announced stuff on Collision. So there are currently nine matches. There will probably be more, but just want to throw that out there. But also, we don't know Adam Cole's status officially because Adam Cole did get hurt at um Grand Slam. So we don't know. But it only I swear to God, this only happened in AEW that he would jump off the stage and possibly hurt himself. Like I, I don't understand how that happened. That's, That's like, another one. As soon as you saw it happen, uh, yeah, again, you could tell. Like, oh no, that, that something isn't right. He couldn't walk either. <laughs> he, so, yeah, he he came down hard on on that ankle. Yeah, so, he was um, trying his best once he got in the ring, but you know, currently the match is MJF, the AEW World Champion, and Adam Cole defending against the Righteous. Why the righteous? I don't know. <laughs> over here, <laughs> I don't know. Why not? They want to match at Grand Slam. That's why we're here. Sure, why not? I don't see them taking yeah. the belt stuff MGF and Cole. This is an actual valid reason. So, mm -hmm. um, what do you think? Uh, no, I, I'm the same. I think MGF and Cole, their story's still going. Um, my entire thought on it, I think I said this last time, is that Cole is doing this to wear MJF out. So when he gets his title match with him, oh, he's already injured, basically. It's like, oh, because he's been wrestling so much. Because, look, he's a double champion. He's making him work hard, so he's worn out. So Fair I think right. they're going to keep the belts. Ah. I think the only thing you do with this is, if we're in the kingdom, then you get the belt off and put him on the kingdom, because that would make sense yeah. for the story they're telling. Right. Um, Sal, what do you think? Um, I mean... I guess to keep the titles on them for now. Fair enough, Dad. Yeah, I I'd see for storyline and everything, keep the belts on them, and then when they have their match with the Kingdom and Roddy Strong, basically kind of Adam, yeah, <laughs> he does something to distract <laughs> Adam. Next thing you know, you you got the Kingdom with the belts, and all of a sudden, yeah. then Roddy takes his you know neck brace <laughs> off, and <laughs> I I love the way. He comes down to the ring with the neck brace on, takes it off, wrestles a match, and then puts it back on. <laughs> you know, it's all about the <laughs> neck out. Yeah. That is funny. The, the funniest thing ever. They're neck strong. They're neck strong. That's what it neck is. Strong. Neck strong. Neck strong. No, the funniest remember, thing you know, ever it's, was it's, him it's, in that hospital bed and the way he like, raised that? it really what slowly. Was that? Like, oh, my God. You know, it, you know, <laughs> the worst bed ever. <laughs> How much more noise can that piece of crap make? I have moved broken beds in a hospital when I'm working. Yeah, so we used to move broken beds around, and they made less noise than that. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for it to fall apart, and the bed just come on down. That was my favorite thing ever. And when he was like, he's like, Adam, Adam, I can't see you. He's like, Open your eyes. I personally love when he called Cole. And he's like, and Cole's like, you're not gonna die, Roddy. You're not gonna die. <laughs> That was a great moment, too. Oh, nice. Sorry. Oh, moving on. We have, I personally love these kind of matches. It's a number one contendership match for the Tag Team Championships. 
really don't do this anymore, but I love them to do it on pay per view. Yeah. I think I back in the day, I always loved when they did like number one contendership for the main title, where it's like, this is your next opponent in the next show. I always love this kind of stuff. Yeah, it's great. So, the match it is, um, the Ring of Honor six man tag team champions, two thirds of them, it is the Young Bucks <laughs> taking on the guns. Taking on the Lucha Bros, taking on for some reason Orange Cassidy and the SCW champion Hook. I don't know why they're a team, but I love them as a team. I have no idea why. Why not? Because um, they're doing something else with Nick Wayne. That's like, I guess. I think it's fun. I think it's silly and fun. Their promos are hysterical to me. Like I love them <laughs> not having promo time. I think it's so funny to me. Um, why do I have a weird feeling OC and Hook are winning this? Because of how much CK loves OC. Like, why do I have this feeling? I like, could see feeling. it. Yeah. Um, even though I think the Guns more should win, because I think them and the Bullet Club Gold are like like the stars of Collision right now. But I have a weird feeling, knowing TK, that he's going to have OC and Hook win this. Um, John, go ahead. Yeah, I could see that happening, totally. Um I think the only thing that makes me not want that to happen is we just went through this whole thing with, you know, Orange Cassidy, he, he, you know, he was nonstop wrestling. He got, he got worn down. You know, that was kind of the storyline there. He was injured. So I, I actually wanted him to kind of go away for a few weeks. Not that I don't like him, you know, just to, to fit the story. Like, Oh, well, I need to recover, but to throw him back in and he wins another title seems to be, <laughs> I wouldn't do that myself. Um, I think, I think the guns, uh, my, that's my choice. Who do I think will do it though? I'm going to say the guns as well because uh, Collision needs. Um, they want to give it a bit of a, a bit of a bump, you know. So, yeah, I was thinking the guns, um, only because yeah, uh, Young Bucks have a title. Screw them. Future <laughs> Brothers, meh. And as much as I love Orange Cassidy, and as much as I love Hook. Orange Cassidy, uh, yeah, like you said, he should be uh, healing up. Yep. That... I'm going to go to Orange Cassidy and, and Hook only because... Well, I he like can be happy kinda... and Hook for the match. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I like the way they kind of interact. Like, you know, you know, Orange will say cool and, and you'll have Hook go, okay. You know, and and the, I love the, the moment where they were sharing chips. That cracked me up. Yeah, that that's it. Sharing the, the 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 Doritos. You know, it's like yeah. So I, I I'm gonna go with uh, Orange Cassidy and and Hook. Fair enough. All right. Um. Next up, is the other member of the ROH Six Man Tag Team Champions, um, Hey Man Adam Page, taking on Swerve Strickland. I'm not gonna lie. I'm looking forward to this match a lot. Um. Honestly, I think Swerve needs to win more. That's my personal opinion. I think he needs to win more. And since Adam Page just won a title, I, I can actually see Swerve winning this. And you may, you can only continue the feud. You don't have to end it here. You can continue on this feud and have a couple more matches and do like yeah. a three match series. And it wouldn't. I'm no one to complain about it. So I'm gonna go Swerve winning this match. Um, John, I'm I'm the same. I think Swerve because he hasn't won a lot, has he? Let's be honest. Um, and it's about time oh. he wins something. And I always think it's um, it makes sense to make someone who's a tag team champion lose when they then have a singles match because it's a way they can take a loss and it not really affect their status as champion. So Swerve needs it. Hangman, he can afford to lose. So why not? Yeah. And then if people like it, do another one. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, this is a good opportunity for uh, Adam Page to take a loss and not have anything on the line for it. So, I think uh, Mr. Swerve is going to win. And I'm dead? Hey, yeah, I, I, I gotta go with Swerve only because storyline, the Mogul Embassy just lost the six-man title, so if you want someone to kind of within the faction win, Swerve would be the best choice. And we get to see, uh, you know, we get to see Prince, Prince Nana, Nana and his little dance. dance. <laughs> Where the with that dance? I didn't Prince, Prince that Nana. 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 Everyone right. likes it. Let's move on. We have the um, Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Championship and the New Japan Strong Championship. With Eddie Kingston beat Claudio Castanelli to win the ROH Championship at um at um Grand Slam. For some reason, he's defending both belts here. I don't know why, but he is. Yeah. 
and he's defending him against the Ring of Honor Pure Champion come Shibata. I don't know why either. I have no clue why we're having this match. But it's the uh, pure title on the line. It's not. No, right. no, it's no. not. No, it's not. <laughs> but um, I, I know Shibata said he wanted to have a match at Russell Dream, and Eddie Kingston said, fine, I'll face you. I have no idea why both bloods are on the line. And for that reason, there's no reason for Kingston to lose. Like, there's no reason for it. I don't understand why oh. we're here and how we got here. Um, John? Yeah, it's it's an odd one. Um, I think Kingston will retain. But the bold move would be Castagnoli comes out, costs him the belt right away. So you have a happy moment and it gets snatched away from you. <laughs> that would be such a bold thing to do, but I don't think they'll do it. I don't think CK would do that. Unfortunately, I don't think it would work that way. No? As long as I were, yeah, I would love to see a triple champion in AEW. Um, I don't see that. I do, although I do see interference. I can totally see that. And then the match, you know, being a DQ. Hmm. Don't get a lot of them. In, well, in AEW, you don't. <laughs> that? Um, I want to go with Shibata winning only because if you want to honor Antonio Noki, uh, what better way to do it by having a triple champion? I mean, because TK uh, was always, has always been saying with Russell Dream, this is the way to honor Antonio Noki. What better way to do it than have Shibata have three belts? The only issue I have here is Shibata has not wrestled a match for New Japan at all. He's been doing matches for Ring of Honor. He's been doing matches for AEW. Since he came back from his brain injury, he has not wrestled a match for New Japan. So I have a feeling there's something going on with him in New Japan. So I don't think they're gonna put New Japan's gonna agree to putting a championship on him. Well, I know they weren't ha- they didn't want him to come back initially. Yeah, so like, I have no, a feeling no, no. that's the only reason I don't think they'll put the I think because both belts are on the line. If we have to bring him on a championship, I think it'd be different. Because okay. both are on the line and New Japan probably wouldn't want Shibata to hold a belt. That might be the only reason that I'm. That, that that might be one of the reasons why he's going to win this. So if New Japan doesn't want him, then he's seen being kind of morphed into AEW. He really is. He's on AEW Ring of Honor all the time. So okay. like, it's not new to him. He's practically in the states now. So like, I I like your idea about it honoring Inoki though. I I completely yeah, forgotten great, about yeah. that aspect because it is the aspect of the show, really. You know. Like, yeah, which which it really needs more, and I understand why they can't do it. It needs more Japanese involvement, really. You can't have a show. You can't have a show on Sunday. That's why. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> it seems the like they just came up with the idea. Like I forgot to check with New Japan to see if they're available to help out. Yeah. <laughs> <I forgot laughs> it's a, oops, it was like what? a last minute decision. Oh yeah, yeah we'll do Wrestle Dream. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Like, it was like it was so weird because yeah, I was looking at it right now. They have a ma- they have a show. They have Road to Destruction. Um, yeah. On the next on Saturday and Sunday, so like they have a show. Oops, it's all Oops. weird, isn't it? So Somebody maybe, maybe in the main office screwed up. Oh, okay, <laughs> let's move on. We have a random women's match translation. We need a women's match on this show. So we threw something together on collision. Um, AEW TBS Championship. It is Chris Antlin undertaking on Julia Hart. At least they put some kind of effort into a storyline here because Julia Hart beating up the undercard women wrestlers, and they and she said, "Well, oh, I'll keep beating them up if you don't give me a title shot." And Chris Handler said, yes, that's more than they usually do for the women. So I can give them credit for that. <laughs> um, it's an attempt. I give them credit for doing something, which is more than they normally do. <laughs> Even though, really, you should have built this up over weeks and weeks where she's beating up different people I agree instead with of you. like five right. days ago. <laughs> I agree with you. But um, Statlander should retain. I, I, my person. If, if they set it up more, if they set it up like John said, if they actually put an effort into this and actually did a storyline <laughs> for longer than two weeks. Like, we're looking at like, one episode of Collision and one episode of Dynamite. Um, That's all you need. It's then, fine. then I can see Julie Hart winning. But because they didn't put any effort in, there's no way they're dropping the bell. John? <laughs> yeah, yeah, same. I mean, Chris Statland, uh, her reign's only just beginning, isn't it, really? Um, although Julia Hart has been getting a lot better. Like, oh, she's I agree not with the, that. Yeah. yeah, she's not the best wrestler in the world, but she can hold a, you a, know, a good match now. A lot better than she was a year ago. A better than she was a year ago. That's for sure. <laughs> and... and that's in ring as well as the most important part of what she's doing. Her, her character. character. Her character's been amazing. Yeah. Like, Ever since she started doing the amazing too. Stuff, she's been yeah. amazing too. Like, uh... I'm obsessed with the theme. I'm obsessed with it. But even those two things, I think, don't at this stage warrant taking the belt off Statlander already, right? It's true. Um, 
Um, yeah, um, Statlander retains, yeah. Yeah, I, there's no reason for a title change with this, but I mean, if you really want to, you know, solidify Julie Hart's character, have her start a program with Will and Nightingale. I think they're doing that match on Wednesday. They're doing that match on Dynamite tonight. Okay. So, I'm moving on. So this is fun. It's the TNT Championship. <laughs> Christian Cage is actually the champion now. <laughs> he actually is the champion. Yeah. Right. I know anyone else. Does anyone else think that's a real jerk move towards Luchasaurus, though? Like, in real life, <laughs> like, behind yes. the scenes. It's mm. like, he never yes. really got to be the champion. No. I think it was a great storyline point on Collision. But as bad as Kevin Kelly has been on Collision, I, I give him credit for pointing out the fact that this is the first time Luchasaurus held the belt with during that triple threat match. Yeah. Like, I like that little detail point. Like, that was a really cool point. But, but uh, surely everyone is the same, right? We, we've all got to be thinking this. Surely that means Luchasaurus is going to turn again soon. Oh, yeah. It's the new big show. You you, you can see the, the breaking <laughs> away, you know, by the body language and everything, so. um, So it's Christian Cage defending against Darby Allen, surprise, surprise, in a two out of three falls match. Um, Why two out of three falls? Because Tony Khan said so. Um, <laughs> literally, that's how that's how it was announced on television. Tony Khan said so. Because Christian wanted to go old school. No, because Tony. No, <laughs> literally, because Tony Khan. Because Tony Khan yeah. told Shivani to tell Christian that in two or three falls. Oh no, he told Renee to tell Christian yeah. two or three falls match. That's what happened. <laughs> there we go. Um. So I have a question for because they haven't done this yet because they haven't obviously they're doing it before the first dynamite as Christian reign. I would love to know if Christian is going to say that my title reign continues. Oh, he will. He absolutely yeah, will. Count Luchasaurus' yeah. days for his cannery. That would crack me up. I'm not going to lie. But um, he, he no almost re- said that on, um, I think it was Collision. Yeah. When they did the little intro thing, he almost said it in those words. So I, I don't expect Christian to drop the belt here at all. Darby's always here, but Darby always doesn't matter if he loses either because it's Darby. Um, John? This was a tough one for me. I'm actually going to be the opposite. I'm going to say Darby's going to win it through luchasaurus interference he's had enough and it's because it's two out of three falls as well so i think it, he might come out for the last fall uh and do a do a swerve I, i'm not confident in this <laughs> it's very 50 50 in my mind so um i don't know for some reason i have this thought that the whole reason why they officially now made him champion is for a certain somebody from his past that's going to possibly come into the company. True. So I don't know um, if they're going to do anything, but for now, I'm going to say Christian Cage retains until that happens. That I'm kind of going along with John's thinking where um, I think Darby Allen's going to take the belt and Luchasaurus is going to do something to Christian to put that in in play, but then the separation between him and Luchasaurus happens, and guess who his new protege is that's going to come in to basically stand by Christian Cage's side? Dick Wayne. Jack Perry. Oh, that would be fun, yeah. I think Dick Wayne would be funnier, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> Probably getting his mom's phone number and everything, you know. <laughs> well, I like Nick Wayne, right? Because you know I watch GCW. I talk about that all the time. But he he needs a bit of something. He needs he needs a different character than just oh my dad's dead. I did hear about the way <laughs> Jack Perry's suspension is up. He is back soon. Hey. He'll be back soon. I did hear that yesterday. So that's good news. So um, wonderful. Let's move on to the AEW World Tag Team Championship match. Sure. Oddly enough, they put more forward for this match than they did for the um, FTR Buck match. It is FTR <laughs> defending against Aussie Open. I swear they cut a pro. They actually did a promo for this on um on Collision. Something the Bucks didn't do to hype up the All In match. <laughs> you know, it, it was good. It was nice to see Aussie Open commentating and, and and dressed up. It was really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're, they're people who needed a bit of character as well, to be honest. Because ever since they joined, they're like, oh, they're just Osprey's friends. That's like, oh, okay, great. <laughs> so it was nice to uh, to hear them, wasn't it? So, so who wins this match? I, I think FTR is just going to retain, but I wouldn't shock me either way, honestly. It wouldn't shock me whatsoever. John? Mm, yeah, this was my other one that I was torn on because... 
uh, FT- I'm, I'm not the world's biggest FTR fan either. This is the thing. Like, they're okay. They're okay. I find them enjoyable. I like Aussie Open. I would prefer them to win. But I think they'll keep it on FTR. Yeah. Um. I don't know, for some reason, I see title change, so I'm going to say Aussie Open wins. Okay, fair enough. I think they'll make a big deal out of it if they do. I mean, they'll make a big deal out of it because they're like, they, they've held the, all the New Japan belts, and they've held the Ring of Honor ones, and now they're winning the AW ones. Like, it'll be a big deal. That could be the story. They're yeah. moving through, yeah. you know, and getting them all. Dad? I see a title change. I see going to Aussie Open, and then what, you can say they're triple crown winners then that way? You know, uh, and that's for the storyline. That'd be great. And as far as what happens to FTR, you should give them some time off to heal up, and then they come back when they're all nice and healed and solid, and you basically put them in a program with us to open again. Unless, of course, you do something with that tag team. Remember the tennis match we talked about earlier. You never know what's going to happen there. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, moving on to the coming event of the show, in my personal opinion, it is so we had at the Grand Slam, we had Chris Jericho defeat Sammy Guevara for some reason. And then, <laughs> oh, apparently they were giving a tribute to Jericho versus Shawn Michaels during this match. They were doing a tribute oh, match. Right. Okay. Jericho I didn't Shawn get Michaels, that. which is why Jericho apparently was in the same color gear that Shawn was in, and Jericho was in, Zabar was in the same color gear as Jericho for WrestleMania 19. Uh, oh, they were, okay. That's what they were doing. Um, mm-hmm. Which is why Jericho right. won the match. This is why Jericho won the match. I'm that's... always torn when people do that, though, because, okay, we all know. I didn't even catch it until the next day when somebody told me. Like, and, I, I, and I love that match. Like, I love that match at WrestleMania 19. I, like, I don't understand dude. what he did this for. Like, it made no sense. Yeah, Most I didn't I didn't pick up on it either. So, so it that's why my, we had um... finish. And then we had Jer- and we had Kavara turn on Jericho, just like Jericho <laughs> turned on Shawn Michaels. Exactly what they're doing. It's the exact same thing. <laughs> the twist here is that Kavara. Then joined up with the Don Callis family. I, I did not see that twist coming. <laughs> I did not expect it. That was a cool surprise. Yeah. Um. That leads us to the match we have now. Um. Jericho confronted Sammy and Takesha and Callis. Takesha and um, Takesha and um, Guevara. Turned, I'm sorry, beating up Jericho. Kenny Omega came out. <laughs> Which, very tight shorts. Very, very tight shorts. <laughs> very, and, tight shorts. very tight shorts. And um, My and, uh, <laughs> and um, the, the, everyone went nuts to the real the Jericho and Omega are on the same page. And um, the Jericho cut this promo on the back, challenging the Don Kyle family to a six man tag or a trios match, or whatever calling them today. And they said it was going to be Jericho, Omega, and Ibushi. So it was Jericho and the Golden Lovers taking on the Don Kyle's family. And it was to cast Sammy Guevara. And all of a sudden, Don Kyle's pretty much plays the ultimate card here and throws us the IWGP UK champion Will Ospreay. Yeah. <laughs> and CJ lost his shit when I told him because like Sammy and, and Osprey are like two of his favorite people in the hey. entire world. Um, and that's our match. It is Jericho and the Lover, Golden Lovers against the Don Cal's family, Takesha, Guevara, and Osprey. I have zero clue <laughs> how this is going to go. John? <laughs> Yeah, this is this is um yeah again there's three in a row that I find difficult, but I I I think what they're gonna do, I I think the Don Callis family are gonna win it. I think you've got to establish them as a, as a tough, scary presence, right? Because he's building it slowly. They're actually taking their time with it, which I'm impressed with. Because Will Osprey still isn't technically a member, is he? No, no. So that's that's weird. Technically, <laughs> yeah. not, technically, technically, what it is is remember um Callis represented Osprey. At Forbidden Door. Mm-hmm. That's For how it happened. Yeah. But uh yeah, so I think they're gonna they're gonna do that and um and maybe Osprey will join him. Yeah. What's interesting to me is I just thought about this, as you're saying they've been taking their time with this. I could almost see them doing another match for Takesha Pins Omega. Again yeah, yeah. and again for the third time. I, I think you drag that out for like two years. <laughs> well, at least get to like at least get to like um double or nothing or something like that next year. Like you go to yeah. that or like the next summer, the double or nothing all out or all in or one of those shows next year. Or it's like one of your big shows. Like, like you do WWE where you draw these things that are like mania. But it's they don't have mania, so that's the problem. They don't have like a big mania. So like double or nothing, the best thing you can do. 
But uh, he's not going to beat Takeshi though, because he's the alpha. <laughs> That's his new thing. I am the. Well, the point is, we're doing Alpha vs. Omega again. That was Jericho vs. Omega back in New Japan. Like, they did that already. It's interesting. That's, That's a good point. point. But, um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to Doc Howell's family to catch the beating Omega again. Sal? Um, I'm not convinced that Jericho is a face. Oh. So I'm not saying that Jericho is going to be joining the Don Callis family, but I think he's going to do Don Callis a favor and, you know, purposely do something to Kenny Omega and then Takeshka gets the pin and we get a uh, Don Callis family with the victory. Interesting. That's an interesting twist. That's an interesting twist. I just don't know. Jericho is flipping back and forth, back and forth, back and forth again. It'd be interesting. I don't know. <laughs> I'm dead. I'm kind of torn with this only because I'm not sure how the program for either of these teams will go, but I would think I would take Jericho and the Golden Lovers to win, and then that sets up a beatdown from the Callis family, and you have another member, surprise, surprise, from Don Callis that comes in and joins the family and finishes the beat down and then down the road, you say, okay, you want to finish this? Let's finish it in the cage. Everything goes, all weapons included. Let's get it done. Boom. Nail in the coffin. Why not? Let's, let's, let's borrow um with it. What was impact some um lockdown some um, weapons match? What was that? Um the um I forgot what that um was, I forgot what that was called. Their their weapons match they did in lockdown. They had a fancy name to it. I just don't remember what it was. Lethal lockdown? Thank you. Lethal nice lockdown. It. Lethal lockdown. Thank you. I, I, that sounded right to me. I wasn't sure if that was right. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah lethal lockdown. We'll do that. Yeah. So all right. Um I think this is the main event. It's a it's a match on the poster. So I'm assuming this is the main event. And the fact they're in Seattle also helps that this is the main event. Um, <laughs> sorry, the American Dragon, Brian Danielson, who I apparently put out the final content on pay per views now. Apparently, that's what we do. Um, <laughs> we do now taking on the New Japan TV champion, Zach Sabar Jr., VSJ himself. Um, Danielson, by the way, we didn't talk about this on the air because this happened when we were on our break last week. That um he announced on collision that this will be his full, last full time year wrestling because he promised his daughter he would be he would stop being a full time wrestler when she turned seven. Yeah, you don't have to live up to your your promises to children. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> As what a me thing to say. And Sal's new meme is. Fuck them kids. Yeah. <laughs> kids don't remember what you promised them. It's fine. Oh, there you go. I think you, you, you just gave me the fuck for the speech show. There, there, there's oh. the title for the show. Fuck them kids. We have a title already, but I need an Instagram clip, so thank you <laughs> so much for that. Do, do you do you buy that it's his last year? I don't know. I don't I know. I can see it being his last full-time year. I can totally see Maybe. that. But thing. they are and to, by they full-time, to... he means doing, you know, 30 shows to 27 shows. <laughs> well, remember, remember TK went and said, I cannot believe he said this on the record, that if anything ever happened to him, that he, he, he he's actually putting it down so that Brian Danielson takes over the company? Yeah. He actually said that? <laughs> I mean, it's, a, it's an interesting I couldn't believe choice. it. I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, for everything sure. that Brian has gone through, uh, he's, yeah, he's, he's got to take this time and have his body heal up and, and, and reconnect and they can probably do something with him behind the scenes, which are really mm -hmm. good, especially as far as a trainer for the up and coming talent that's that AEW is going to have in the Definitely. future. Um, is this as simple as Brian Anderson wins? Is that as simple because we're in the main event, it's in Seattle, they really have everyone losing their hometown. It's ZSJ who's not actually on the roster. It's like a dream match for Brian. Is this as simple as Brian wins? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I say no. Really, Sal? Oh. Go to you, good. Good. You say yeah. I, I say no. I say um, this is a great opportunity to put um, Zack Sabre Jr. over and do something down the line. And when he comes back, people are like, "Oh yeah, that's the guy that beat Brian Danielson." You know what's interesting? The only reason I, the reason I'm leaning towards the obvious Brian win is I have a feeling. And they haven't said anything about it. They haven't hinted about it. But I have a weird feeling that Wrestle Kingdom is going to be Danielson versus um, Okada, too. Oh. You, you, have, you keep Danielson winning. And then you have oh. Danielson lose to Okada at Wrestle Kingdom. I'd Interesting. Like 
to have Okada re-get his win back from Forbidden Door. Which I think yeah, you yeah. have to do, to be honest, because I, I think that's I was reason shocked they at that. That's the only reason they probably in Japan probably agreed to Okada losing. So they can yeah. have the rematch at Wrestle Kingdom. That's probably the only reason. Like, it's got to be, because that was a surprise. I didn't expect it. It was a nice surprise. My favorite part was Sal's text and like, I guess that's how they paid for Final Count. That's why he won, so they're going to play Final Countdown again. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I didn't want to do it a few more times. That's when, they real, that's when we found out that we realized that they're actually going to be keeping the song for the pay per views, which is expensive <laughs> as fuck, but hey, they're not paying to see a punk anymore, so why not? But it's got to go somewhere. <laughs> but it's got to go somewhere. <laughs> well, this, this match isn't for Zach's title. Oh, is it's, it? just a, it's, just, it's just a one-on-one, no yeah. titles, it's a match, have a match. That's another hint to me that maybe Danielson wins, because he can win, and it not, you know, uh, Zach doesn't... doesn't need anything. Yeah. It, 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 it's basically, as Daniel puts, or Brian puts it, one good technical wrestler against another good technical wrestler, and see who the better person is. I will give credit where it's due. Everyone on this, everyone knows over the last few years, I was not a fan of ZSJ at all. I was not a no. fan of him at all. But I will give him credit. Since he joined TM, him, him, TMDK, he realized that he has to lighten his character up a little bit. And I've enjoyed him more as a member of TMDK oh, okay. than I did before that. Like, I'm actually becoming more... I, I'm not even... I'm not a fan. I'm not, like... Number like I'm not going crazy, but I don't hate his <laughs> matches anymore. Because at least he has some kind of personality now in his matches, and it's not just a boring. Yeah, oh, he, look, at this, look at this hole he's in. He's actually showing personality now, and I care right. now. And I'm <laughs> like, I laughed at Forbidden Door when he came out and he played his old music, and he literally looked at the camera like, "This is not my theme music." <laughs> <laughs> I cracked the yeah, it. His- don't be ashamed when never have done that. Like the stuff like that. Like, <laughs> yeah, his, his character persona is more outspoken now, which is really great for him. Yeah, is he joined TMDK? Like, I, it's nice. It's nice, and I, I like I noticed it during the G one more than anything else. Like that's why I really noticed it. It was during the G one. So I, mean, I always liked him. So to me, it's just even better. <laughs> yeah, like, it, it, it's, it's no one on this show that I was never a huge fan of him. But like, I give him credit, especially during the G one. I was more impressed by his character work during the G one than I ever have been before. He's he's a good he's a really good heel, even though you think oh boring guy you usually just just make him a face you know but no 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 he's good at being an a kind of stuck he's, up he's, asshole who thinks he's promos, the best. He's yeah. behind his his promos are backstage in Japan shows have been amazing. Like yeah, he yeah. doesn't give a fuck anymore, and he and he shows he doesn't give a fuck anymore. <laughs> like, it's great. What, <laughs> what's really interesting about Zack Saber Junior. is 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 technical prowess, and I'll compare him to a legend in the past. Billy Robinson, mm. where he's got that type of, you know, I'm already thinking about my next move before we can even think about your first move, and he's on on and, and joint manipulations. I mean, the technical skills, bar none, he's got it down pat. And for him to go against Brian Danielson, the way Brian is, this is going to be a great match. And if oh, yeah. Black Blue Combat Club does not get involved, it's even better. Well, I, I know what I've noticed that when Danielson has his one on one matches, he's by himself. Yeah. I noticed that on Collision too, but he had that chapter <laughs> death match with um Ricky Starks. There yeah. was no Blackpool Combat Club out there. No. It was just him. Well, I've, I've, never fully, a lot lately. I've never fully understood what's going on with them because Danielson only seems to appear with them occasionally. Actually, from from actually, you know what's funny? There's a theory going around that Claudio shaking Kingston's hand. Because Mox mm-hmm. Mox helping Danielson against Ricky Stark. Ricky Stark is obviously a heel. And Mox helping Danielson with Ricky is slowly turning Blackpool Combat Club being faced. Because the crowd doesn't want to boo them. The crowd does yeah, not yeah. want to boo them. So they're slowly doing it. And they couldn't do the full turn until the Claudio Kingston feud was over. Hmm. And then when Claudio shook Kingston's hand finally, that was the full face turn. Because it doesn't matter what Yuta does. It's the other three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yuta's along for the rock. Yuta's along for the rock. Sheesh. But like the other three. If they're all turning face, and then Yuta's just there as background fodder, and to beat up, and have Claudia beat up for promo, which was one of the funniest things I've seen in the last few months. <laughs> <laughs> like if that's what Yuta's there for, that's fine. Wheeler Yuta like, is like the uh, step sibling that you don't want to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> well, I heard Uh-oh. a rumor, which might have been confirmed or denied by the time you hear this. There was a rumor there was going to be another match added to this card, which was, I believe, Utah and Ricky Starks. Ah, 
Interesting. Maybe uh, that'll come out tonight from Dynamite. Or it'll be disproven. <laughs> you know, what was that match? Sorry, I was um my mic decided my not my microphone, my mic base, the one I plug uh, into my ding actually decided uh, to die. I mean not the microphone itself, the base decided to die. That was weird. I never that... this never dies. So I was surprised. That surprised <laughs> me. So what was the match? Sorry, I was switching microphones. That's right. There's a there was a rumor that um I don't know how much to believe this, that is uh, on this card you're also gonna get Wheelie Utah versus Ricky Starks. That'd be interesting. And that again would go back to my whole point of the Blackpool Combo Club turning face. Right. Yeah. I have to go back to that. Like that would be interesting, actually. You know, I could see it happening. It, Especially because Daniels is busy. Daniels like... is busy and just throw his iron board out there to face Ricky Starks. You know. <laughs> well, then it would even make him more of a baby face yeah. if Big Bill comes out to help Ricky, and then you get the rest of the Blackpool Combat Club that basically takes out Big Bill. That'd be interesting. That, that would so solidify him as being baby. Actually, it would be interesting to have Claudio come out with um, Yuda. Because we don't know how Mox's status right now, but his concussion and everything, we don't know his status. But having Claudio right. helping Yuta, because Big Bill's out there, that would be interesting. Yeah. The yeah. Claudio and Big Bill would be fun because of Claudio's strength. That would be fun. Yeah. I want to see him do the swing with that guy. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I mean. That's the kind of stuff that'd be interesting. Like, or or you know what you do? Even if you don't even do a do one on one match, you do a tag match on the pay per view. You, you have go. Bill and Ricky but... against Claudio and Yuta. You do that. So... If Claudio would do the swing and Big Bill, does that mean he would have to like short up so that way he's got more legs hanging over? He, he hit that on the big show. I don't look. think it's a problem. He hit that on the big show. I'm not really worried about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really stressed about it. You just don't want to see anything happen to anybody. I so, like right. that pairing of Ricky Starks and Big Bill. Because Big they Bill, I was un like... They unexpectedly, too. Unexpectedly, they yeah. click. Like, I didn't expect them to click. They do. No, not at all. Because like as soon as he joined Big Bill, I, I was just like... I don't know. He, he wasn't this. He wasn't as good as he was in Impact. I didn't get it straight away. I was like, "What's going on here?" Yeah. Now he's getting somewhere with his character, and the, I know it's this. It's a character we've all seen before. It's like Diesel. Can't teach that. Sorry. It, it kind of reminds me of the big, <laughs> like the Big Brother and Little Brother thing, where Ricky starts as a mouthpiece and he's the the, the so called brains. I agree with that. Like it's, little... it's, it's, it's like those cartoons. It's like the cartoon with the little dog and the big dog behind him. He had to hold the little dog back. Like the yeah, little... yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Good, exactly. That's what it reminds me of. Like... Exactly. <laughs> it's good. All right. Well, that is Russell Dream.